We are back and we are doing some undercovered lights, which I sort of did last time. Here is the matte finish evolve range from BG. This is the JCC strip light. This is the stuff we were doing last time. Customer's gone and put, I look, I quite like it. I was obviously hesitant before, so I thought, because it looked like that. Um, customer's fine with me since, by the way. And also this should be the last video that you'll see with this, because I'm shaving it off. Um, my sixth month, sorry, my camera went flat. My sixth month anniversary of my beard transplant is up. So I'm filming that on Friday and in the video, I'm gonna go through obviously bits from when it happened throughout the different months, straight the progress pictures up to now and then shave it off and start all over again. Cause I'm interested to see what it looks like now with the density it is not clean shaving, but trim down loads and get rid of this. Cause a lot of people don't like it. And guess what? I don't care. I do, but I want to see what it looks like and it's just hair. So it will grow back now before it didn't cause it was none, but I'm in the process of putting a massive, massive giveaway together for the hundred K. Lots of companies involved already, but I put, uh, I'd say a begged-ish, which does not for me, it's not for mine, it's to give away for you lot. So if you haven't already, you need to be subscribed and you have to like this video to be within any chance of winning this amazing. It's going to be a couple of grand's worth of stuff to give away. So look forward to that. I'm going to stick this back up. So now I, on the previous video, I bought the wrong, I bought 12 volt drivers. This is now 24 volt. I'm going to screw them back up there. I'm going to get this connected in. I'm gonna have to redo the terminations. And one thing I wanna do is I might actually do this because I think I brought it all, is do the LED tape all the way around so it gives it a really good glow, which I haven't done before. Normally we just put one line in and that's plenty. But because the lights in here that we fit are so bright and the builder messed up and never ran the cable down for this, we've only got two undercovered lights, which are here and here. And if we can make it as bright as possible in an evening, we ran out for a separate switch. We can just come in and use the undercovered lights as our lighting rather than anything else. So that's the plan. Then we're gonna get the big spool. I think I put it in the van. I hope I put it in the van. Right, a few people said about these joints as well, which are these, which are like the quick fix joint, I would say, instead of soldering it. I really like them. A lot of people complain to me about it that they're not as good as a solder joint. Yeah, agree. But quicker, easier, less materials, less tools to bring on, I think it's pretty good. And if they're accessible, like this is, I can't really see the issue using it. But what I'm gonna do, just to double check, because I've got a long length here, is wire this into the new one, because these aren't JCC um, drivers. These are ones that I got from the local wholesaler. So I'd rather just put this in now, double check that this works, put it into the Wagers, which are behind you, which I'll show you in a second before I connect anything up. Push that together so it snaps down and that's in. So we just get these wired in. And here we've used from the last video, the small Wago boxes, which are like pass through ones, which allow us to put the cables in, bring them out here, screw the driver up, make it nice and neat. So they're all in now. I'm just gonna go and turn the switch on. That's nice and bright. All right, let's get these all popped back up in here. No signal insulation in there. Get that pop through there. Lid on. And then I put the screws there and there before. So we'll get them back up, which are these little dinky ones. You can see that. Often it again. Well, I made that way harder than it needs to be. Also, I do know that this would have looked a lot nicer if some 12 volt cable was brought down. To be completely honest, with the way the kitchen fit has been and the way the build's gone, it was better that that was brought out here for me. So I knew exactly that that was, it was gonna happen. It was gonna pull, pull through um, then trying to faff around with it. Cause we've had it that many times where we put a dryer up top, which works out really well to bring the 12 volt cable down. The build's not done it through or the kitchen fit's not pulled it through and then we have to go fishing and it makes the job a lot harder. And sometimes we've had physically not been able to do it. So at least with this way, you've got it. And if anything goes wrong, it's easily accessible. And when you stood up, you won't be able to see anything. Right, we're all done up there. That one's in, around, as best we can do. Same thing here, like I said in the last video, that is the feed that goes over to that one, but the builder left it in the ceiling. Uh, he forgot to bring it down and we couldn't get to it now because it's a finished ceiling. So there's a microwave going under there, so it won't be too bad. So this is our one. I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to connect up the LED tape, get it into the driver, 
same way, link that up, double check this is all working, and then we can mount this up here somewhere. If I put the box that way, put the driver, to be fair, I could probably put the driver sideways here and allow me to start the LED tape within the corner and around. I'm gonna feed that spare cable just into the box just to get it out of the way and it's there in case it ever at some point the customer goes, I'll tell you what Nick, I went to cut the hole in my seat and find that cable and I'll be like, stay less. Put some each ring on it. Obviously we've already tested it to make sure the terminations are sound. Well that Adam's in the background. Adam's here everyone, just so you know. I just laugh at him from off the airpods. Right. <laughs> lights off. And the cupboard lights on. Bada bing bada boom. Looks good how it shines down the uh, feature wall. Yeah, that does look good. And I like the way I've done the, the recesses in and around. Yes. I'm gonna also so I've got loads of this tape left. I'm gonna do it at my house. And what did my other half say when I said I'm gonna do it at my house? You've got about five other jobs to finish as well. From seven years ago, yeah. You've got like four different dial lights a year, four different dial lights. I know, I've got more. <laughs> Back in the day when I started YouTube, obviously I was getting sent stuff left. Like I am now, I sent stuff left, right and center. And I would say a yes to a lot of it. But obviously I wanted to try it out first before I recommended it to you guys yeah. in case it's trash. So what I ended up doing, if I got sent like one down light, I would put it in my kitchen or my dining room or the hallway. And like at the moment, I think I have nine different brands of down lights running through my house just downstairs and like 50% of them have gone as well. So I need to change them all over, but yeah. Anyway, different change of scenery, as you can tell. Uh, just have some annoying news. Tomorrow and Thursday, which are booked in for myself and Adam, the job has just been canceled which is out of our control, well I say cancelled, moved. So I've just had to go on the phone and panic and turn around and find some stuff to do, which we have. But I thought I'd come back here uh, and organize the stuff because I was planning to take absolutely nothing with me, but now with the certain jobs are on. But I'll give you a little van run through of all the stuff I've been doing in the background. I haven't really videoed anything because I just wanted to stick my headphones in and enjoy it. So, van vaults. I know you can get dividers for these, but I couldn't be asked to buy one or wait for van vault to send me one, so I made a 12 mil ply in there for my batteries. And one thing I'm gonna do as well is start labeling them because I've all got my engraving of my logo and everything, which is really cool. Um, but I know I've lost a few batteries and I've also had, the top one is the one I chucked in the river and the other two are Procore batteries that actually broke. And Bosch said they would replace them at some point, even though I didn't buy them, you all know that. Um, I don't know why they broke. I've tested them, I've tried. There's still power there, but it just physically won't charge. So I guess it's the the motherboard on top of it, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd put my 12 volt stuff in the front here. We've got my spit nail gun and we've got my DeWalt cable stapler. That and batteries here. And this one, I've actually taken a lot of power tools out because obviously Adam is gonna have his own power tools very soon. A couple of SDSs, the usual jam. And recently as well, we're actually going to Armeg on Friday to have a factory tour. So they sent me some stuff. They actually sent Adam loads of stuff. I, got, I made a list for him and said, Said this all to Adam, and I'll have a couple of drill bits if that's all right. And they're like, yeah, yeah, Sam, so I should have asked for more, but never mind. So you'll see that video coming up. Um, what I've done, so I bought, purchased that one and that one, and two more of these when I went to Elex Coventry, which was awful, by the way. So if you are going to a trade show, I would recommend CEF Live. It is a lot better. They didn't pay me to say that. Watch Dave Savie's video, you'll understand. Uh, but I thought I would push this here. I built up the frame again, so it's on the framework, same as this side. We've got pack outs all across the top, so I'm gonna buy another two of these. These now have my Wagos in, so I'll show you these. Right, we'll start from the bottom. You might have seen this on Instagram already. I made myself a spit nail gun box. So we've got some gas, we've got some fixings, and we've got some concrete and brick nails. Awesome, all in one place. And the good thing is, I've got a mounting frame on the back there, which actually had spare, which will go on. We have a massive box of ideals that I had spare. And then as well, we've got the box of Wagos, which you saw, and we've also got loads of Wago boxes as well. So the purpose of this is I regrettably, because I actually loved my Stanley stackers and also the framework that I built down, which I had them all angled, which I built when I first got the van. It's never let me down. It was a fantastic bit. And if anyone ever wants to do it, I highly recommend it. But I'm moving over towards the pack out stuff now just for the usability of it. Um, a lot of stuff like this, big screw box. If I had to get this out of the van, it's so heavy and unnecessary, I only need half of it. And that's what 
made me fall in love with the little ones. So we've got cable clips here of different sizes, sort of a fixing box. We've got some plasterboard fixings, some pins, you know, you can see there, but then gets to the juicy stuff. So you all know what's in here from the last video. We've got patrices, we've got double sockets, all that jazz. But this is the one that I've just set up and I forgot I've actually got another three drawer set turning up, which I don't know where I'm gonna put. I forgot I ordered it. And I've got six of the shallow and six of the deep of these boxes coming up, which is a few more things that I've got dotted around that's gonna be going in there. But this is where I'm getting with it, where a lot of these boxes I wasn't using barely ever, but stayed in the van. So I've got some spare, RCBOs, 32s, 26s, some blanks, verso blanks, and normal ones, and just some fusible kit and some seals. We've got our crimps, eye crimps, and through lugs all here. Obviously, we've got loads of spare ones at the back. These are all my glands. You've got sort of piranha nuts, 20 mil, 25 mil, some normal glands, some banjos. You can see how many banjos I've not used in the past. For some reason, I've collected them uh, because we're using piranha nuts. Uh, some Bushing couplers, metal ones, box of bolts, which has got sizing on it. And we've got cleats and flexicon glands going across. White conduit and trunking. Black conduit, and then the top one, which I'm not too happy about yet because of this. We've got dades, hole saws, all various sizes with the arbors. But I've got to do this every time I open and close it. Up in that, I think I've got some Starrett hole saw sets, as in like uh, some nice clean brand new ones for worktops or kitchen cupboards and that sort of stuff. P label printer, tool pouch, that sort of stuff up here. And then I, I've sort of come to a dead end, so if you guys can have a thought, but <laughs> I don't need any of this anymore. Obviously I've got my first aid here, and when I get some more boxes, they'll be mounted here. I've got uni lights and um, work mats in there. I've got my cables, which have now been shifted down from the top to this one. Hoover will go in here, but realistically, this is now obsolete. And if I get more pack out, which I might do, i have sort of be running out of space. I could put some more drawers here, but then it's just keeping more and more stuff in the van. And let's say if I want to come and grab, like all the stuff I'm putting in these is the stuff that I can think, actually, I need five stuffing glands, I'll just take the box. But if I'm ever going to need armoreds or crimps or eye crimps, you only need one or two ever, so you can just come grab them out of this. But it's it's trying to figure out a way. I've sort of done this on a whim, and bit by bit, unlike my when I did my van to start with, I sort of drew it out and figured out exactly what I wanted measurements. This, it's just been like, oh, I'll buy that and see where it fits and, and fit it. Same with this, like, it doesn't wobble, doesn't wriggle, doesn't rattle half as much as you I thought it was going to. So it works really well. But yeah, that's sort of where we're at at the moment. We've got more stuff turning up but it's like DIN rail connectors. I want them in a box or in one of the new drawers. I've got loads of fire fixings and some stuff from Spit that they sent me. So we've got P-clips. we got D-line sent me some stuff ages ago. Linean clips, D-line clips. That all wants to go in my eyes in a uh, storage case because that's the sort of stuff you'd be taking in when you're doing a rewire and whatnot and hammering loads to the ceiling floors, whatever. But I've got so many of these boxes out now another box of these. But I said, Adam, I said to Adam, do you want them? And he was like, no, no, because he's going to pack out as well. So as and when this is had the exchange over, if you're local to me and you're an apprentice or you're new to the trade, just give me a shout and you can just have them. Like, I don't want any money for them. I think I paid, I think it was, I got them on a deal sometimes. It was 25 pound for a pair. So there's at least a couple hundred quid's worth of Stanley Fat Max boxes that have been used, but none of them are snapped or broken or even cracked. They're just a bit dusty. Uh, you can just have them. Um, but I think this is the only one because I accidentally hit it with the circular saw. So like I said earlier, 100K giveaways coming up very, very soon. 3,900 or something to go uh, left. So if you want to be part of it, you need to be subscribed. You have to have liked this video and all, yeah, I want you to go back to all my 700 videos, possibly 800 videos and like them as well to be within a chance of winning. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.